Podcast. I'm Jimmy Finizzi. I hope you're doing well. As always, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to take a listen. I really do appreciate it. Before we get started, questions, opinions, Twitter and Instagram at bottom line WMCX. Don't forget to use the hashtag bottom line voice message. Leave one on Anchor, the app, or at anchor.fm. And please, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a like and a comment down below. It helps out tremendously. And please make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss a single episode. And please make sure you subscribe on all audio listening platforms. Just include Jimmy when searching for this podcast. So today is not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. I can tell you that right now because, boy, oh, boy. The NFC least (laughs) is on my mind today. Now, this might be a bit of a shorter episode. I'm not going to be too long discussing this, hopefully, because I, I really don't have much to say. I really, really don't, because this division is quite possibly the worst in the National Football League, and it's not even close right now. As a matter of fact, let me give you the current standings as we speak right now. At the time of this recording, October 20th, 2020, the Dallas Cowboys – They got beat down by the Arizona Cardinals on Monday Night Football this week. They are two and four as we stand right now. The Philadelphia Eagles, oh, by the way, the Cowboys are one and oh in the uh, division. The Philadelphia Eagles are one, four, and one. I still think ties in the NFL are absolutely ridiculous, but I digress there. The New York Football Giants who actually won a football game this week, are 1-5 and five and are 1-1 one and one in the division. Oh, and the Eagles are 0-1 in the division. And the Washington football team is also 1-5 and 1-1 and one and one in the division. I actually did the math here, and if I'm doing this correctly, I believe the NFC least is a combined 5-16- and one. If that does not scream putrid, I don't know what does. First of all, since the Cowboys are fresh off a loss on Monday Night Football, let's discuss them because, my goodness, I mean, where, where in the world does this team go from here? Obviously, we know what happened with Dak Prescott, and from what I heard recently, he is doing well. He is home recovering No infections in his leg, which is tremendous news to hear. So still wishing all the best for Dak Prescott. And I really, really hope he actually gets a chance to play again because he absolutely deserves it. But that's beside the point. Now you got Andy Dalton to deal with for the rest of the season. And I have been on the record in saying I think Andy Dalton is still a solid, not good, not great. He's a solid starting quarterback in this league. And he still can be a starting quarterback. And I personally thought he had a much better team around him this time because he spent nine years in Cincinnati. Yeah, he made the playoffs quite a few times with Cincinnati. But you know what? Was the team around him really any that good? I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was solid around him at times, but was it really all that special? No, not really. So, and then you look at the Cowboys, you're thinking, oh, my goodness, they got probably the best offensive line in football. They can score points like there's no tomorrow. Andy Dalton's going to do great things. And then Monday Night Football happens. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, it, it's, just, it's just absolutely dreadful what happened. I mean, is Ezekiel Elliott all of a sudden has butterfingers. He can't hold on to the football. The offensive line is horrible. The defense is horrible. Probably the worst in the National Football League. And that is shocking from a Cowboys perspective because their defense is normally not this bad. I mean, it's, it's not the best in the NFL, but I, mean, I get it. Losing Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch have been big losses, although 
I think uh, Leighton Van Der Esch actually was just activated off of the uh, injured reserve list. So I think he's back. But Jalen Smith still is a significant loss for them on defense. But even still, those, it's those two guys on defense and there's everybody else. No, really, that, that, that's pretty much all it is. So this year, it's dreadful. Over the years, we have never seen this Cowboys defense look as dreadful as it has. This year, I mean, my God, it, like I said, it is probably the worst in the National Football League. And it did not help that the Dallas Cowboys only scored 10 points against the Arizona Cardinals team, who's actually pretty decent this year. I mean, Kyler Murray, we've seen flashes of what he can do, and Kyler Murray looks like he's going to be an absolute stud. I mean, you saw some of the throws he was making. And by the way, let me address this quick. Kyler Murray only threw the ball nine times in the game. Nine times, and the Cardinals won. Andy Dalton threw the ball 54 times, and the Cowboys still lost the game. You cannot make this up. Oh, and Andy Dalton still didn't throw for nearly 300 yards. You cannot make this up. You don't, you don't believe me? Go look up the stats yourself. Or listen to Stephen A. Smith, because he said the same thing as well. <laughs> and we all know how Stephen A. Smith is feeling about this. I mean, my goodness gracious. But look, bottom line, I'm still picking the Cowboys to win this division, because right now, it's their division to lose. If they do not win this division, they might as well just start from scratch and build around Dak Prescott. And, and, and if I were them... I mean, I know Neil and I have made the argument again that, you know, Dak Prescott really doesn't deserve the type of money that he wants. He, apparently, he wanted like $30 million, $40 million a year. That's obviously not going to happen, but I probably still would have paid him. I mean, if you could have given him at least a team-friendly type of deal, you could have extended him maybe, well, at least maybe two more years and then see where it goes from there. Maybe give him a chance to prove himself a little more. But now that he's hurt again, well, not, not again. Now that he's hurt, when he comes back, because I fully expect him to be the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys next season. When he comes back, sign him to the franchise tag again, and then let him prove that he can stay healthy. And if he can, then we can talk about contract extensions. But right now, you had your chance to pay him. It's too late now. Sorry, but hey, I'm, I'm not Jerry Jones. I can't get inside his head. But bottom line, I'm, I'm still picking the Cowboys to win this division. It's theirs to lose. They're still the better team in my eyes, but my God, that, that loss, <laughs> that, pretty much, that pretty much may set the tone for the rest of the year if the Cowboys do not get their act together. I'm still picking them to win the division, but it's not looking good right now for the Cowboys. And then you have the Eagles. I mean, my goodness. I mean, everywhere you turn, the Eagles seem to have a pile of injuries. I mean, this guy is injured. That guy is injured. You're injured. You're injured. You're injured. Everywhere you turn, there's an injury. And Carson Wentz, listen, I know some people are kind of questioning Carson Wentz's play because there will be some games where, oh my God, he actually looks like himself again and then there's some games where he'll be like oh well he reverted back to his old self and he, he's turning the ball over a ton he can't hold on to the football he's getting sacked too many times well it doesn't help that his offensive line sometimes collapses but again I digress there but the Eagles look with any team of this division I would not hit the panic button because every team believe it or not still has a chance to make the playoffs. That is how putrid this division is. You're literally going to have a team in this division make the playoffs with an under 500 record. Think about that for a minute. Have you ever seen that happen in the National Football League before? I personally have not. But in my lifetime, this is probably the first time I'm going to see something like this happen. If you have any recollection of when that first happened, let me know on social media. Like I said, hashtag bottom line, at bottom line WMCX on Twitter and Instagram. But you're literally going to have a team make the playoffs with an under 500 record. And look, 
I, I know, I know I, when Neil and I did our Giants and Jets previews, and I'm not going to waste my time with the Jets. No offense to if you're a Jets fan out there, but my God, they're just a shambling disaster in themselves. But I'm not going to waste my time on them. I'm sorry. But when Neil and I did our Jets and Giants preview, we played the win loss win loss game. And I think if I remember correctly, Neil had them going. I think Neil had them going like three and 13, I believe. Some, somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. But I remember I had them going 10 and six. And yes, I know. I knew right off the bat I was going to be dead wrong on that because this Giants team is not a 10 and six team. And nor is this team a playoff contending team by any stretch of the imagination. So, yes, I knew I was going to be wrong about them going 10 and six. But never did I once say that they were a playoff team. And we'll get into more into the Giants in a little while. But look, the Eagles, if it wasn't for that stupid tie against the Bengals, they would probably be tied for first in the division. As a matter of fact, I think they still are. I know the, I know the Giants and the Washington football team have the same record. But technically speaking, the Eagles could still be – well, look, every, every team still is in a race for first place, as shocking as that may sound. But because of a stupid tie by the Eagles, it's looking to be a little bit more complicated. So, look, bottom line, the Eagles, look, the injuries are coming back to bite them. But they, they also need to get their act together. Now, the Giants. My New York football Giants. I mean, hey, look, they actually got a win. Good for them. It wasn't pretty, but if you're a Giants fan like me, you will take it. A win is a win. And they, ironically enough, they played the Washington football team who decided stupidly after Kyle Allen threw what could have been potentially a game tying touchdown, Riverboat Ron decides to go for two and how'd that work out? Didn't work. So I guess you could say there was a little bit of greed on Ron Rivera's part, but I digress there. But listen, Washington, what, what can you really say? I mean, Dwayne Haskins really hasn't lived up to the hype. He gets benched. Kyle Allen is now your starting quarterback. I mean, do you really have full faith in him? I don't think so. Their offensive line is also terrible. Their defense is actually pretty solid. One of the great things about that team is actually their defensive line. So don't question that. The one Good thing, though, one of the other good things that happened this year to Washington was the fact that Alex Smith took the field again this year. After what this man has been through, I mean, Alex Smith, in case you don't know what happened, he suffered a terrible, terrible leg injury about a couple years back on the same day when Joe Theismann suffered his injury. The only difference is, unfortunately, Joe Theismann never played football again, and Alex Smith, thank the Lord in heaven above, got, his, got another chance to play in the NFL, and that is an absolute blessing. I was so happy to see him back on the field. This man could have potentially lost his life, but by the grace of God, he was able to see the field again, and I am, I'm really, really happy for him, and I really, really do hope he gets more chances to start being careful, of course. But I really hope he gets more chances because well, if he decides to retire at the end of this season or maybe next year will be his last, I, hey, I get it. You don't want to risk that injury again. But I personally hope he at least, gets, at least gets a couple more starts because I think he absolutely deserves that opportunity after what he went through. But bottom line with Washington, eh, they're just eh, don't really expect much. But now the Giants. My New York football giants. Again, they actually won a game. So, hey, good on them. I will take it. But, pe- but some people like Rex Ryan are saying, oh, well, that's probably one of the worst wins in their franchise history. Wouldn't you want to tank for Trevor Lawrence? Hell no. <sighs> Can we stop with that? Play- Look, Daniel Jones, I know... I know some people are ready to give up on him already. Let me, let me talk you off the ledge a little bit here. Look, 
Does he have a turnover problem? Yes, a big time turnover problem. And it needs to be fixed fast. I 100% agree with that. It is a problem. It has been the problem. It has been a problem since, quite frankly, last year. And it, it, it needs to be fixed. No question about it. I am not denying that. And if it doesn't get fixed, then we'll see what happens from there. But I am not, I am not ready to give up on this kid, to, kid just yet. <sighs> there are flashes where he looks absolutely amazing. I mean, you, you saw that. Um, <clears throat> I forget how many yards it was, but you saw that run where he faked out the cameraman. He faked out everybody for crying out loud against Washington. So you saw a flash there. His favorite target is still D Darius Slayton. And he has a hell of an arm. Don't get me wrong. He has a hell of an arm. And he's mobile. He can actually run with the football. But like I said, he needs to hold on to it. So he can run with the football. He's more mobile in the pocket. He can throw. The only problem is, like I said, he needs to stop with the turnovers. He needs to hold on to the football. And he needs to stop throwing some stupid interceptions. I agree. But I am still not giving up on this kid just yet. He will be fine. I am 100% confident that this problem will get fixed. So please, if you're a Giants fan ready to give up on Daniel Jones, come off the ledge. Please, he will be fine. Please do not give up on this kid just yet. Please, if you really want to see where the problems lie, look up above. Dave Gettleman. It starts at the top. This man should never have been hired to begin with. He had no idea what the Giants needed. He had no clue. Lewis Riddick would have been perfect. And I will continue to say that till I am blue in the face. Lewis Riddick knew what the Giants needed. They needed to rebuild the offensive line. They needed help on defense. They needed more receivers around the quarterback. So, in a way, hmm, maybe, maybe all that wasn't Eli's fault after all. I mean, granted... Eli did throw some dumb interceptions, yes. But it wasn't all his fault that the Giants have let him down ever since they won their most recent Super Bowl. I'm sorry. It is not on Eli Manning. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to get into all that. This is not all on Daniel Jones. It's not all his fault. The offensive line is still, eh, it, 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 it's okay. You know, it, it has actually been a little bit, a little bit solid, but it's still it's still bad. You know, their defense is eh. It, it it's eh. Clearly, the loss of Saquon Barkley is not doing them any favors either because their running game is in shambles. The only time they'll really score points on offense is when Daniel Jones throws the ball at Darius Slayton. That's pretty much it. Because the chemistry between those two is absolutely off the charts. There's no question about it. However, I will say this, the defense actually did a pretty solid job against Washington considering the fact that, you know, the go-ahead touchdown they got was off a fumble recovery, a scoop and score by Tay Crowder of all people, Mr. Irrelevant. So what does that say? So defense did a solid job against Washington. No questions asked. But overall, they're still, eh, to me, I don't know. But listen, the bottom line is, the NFC least, look, just, just throw it all away. You, you might as well just throw it all away at the end of this season. I, I don't know what they're going to do after this. Maybe they're going to restructure the division just because of this, which would be an absolute atrocity, but I digress. But just, just throw the NFC least away. It, it, really, it, really just, it, it really is absolutely atrocious. I really, really hope that all of these teams get their act together. But, hey, somebody's got to make the playoffs – and I still think it's going to be the Dallas Cowboys, but it's not looking good for them right now. And look, the Giants aren't making the playoffs. Washington's not making the playoffs. And the Eagles, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's Dallas's division to lose. If they do not win this division, it, it, it's pretty much a wrap in Dallas. So bottom line, NFC East, it's the Cowboys division to lose, but all the teams better get their acts together because I don't think it's getting any better in that division anytime soon. And on that note, that'll wrap it up for this episode of the Bottom Line Podcast. If you have any thoughts on anything we discussed, let us know on Twitter and Instagram at BottomLineWMCX. Use hashtag BottomLine. Leave a voice message on Anchor, the app, or at Anchor. 
Anchor.fm. And please leave a like and a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. And please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. And please make sure you subscribe on all audio listening platforms. Just include Jimmy when searching for the Bottom Line Podcast. Neil will be joining me in the next episode as obviously one of the big stories of the week. Doc Emmerich, Mike Doc Emmerich, one of the voices of our generation, has decided to call it quits after a 47-year broadcasting career. So, yeah, it's hockey is definitely not going to be the same without him next season. But, hey, I wish him nothing but the best. I wish, I wish him and his wife all the success in the world upon retirement. You know, he's got the pups. He's got horses. So he's definitely living the life. But in the next episode, Neil and I have something special planned. We will be going over our top five Doc Emmerich moments. And this will not be an easy list to put together. So this should be really, really fun and maybe a bit emotional as well. As I know, Doc has played a big role in Neil's life and, in a way, he impacted mine as well because he's, he's one of the reasons why I want to keep doing this. He really, really is. Him and Sam Rosen, because I'm, I'm a Ranger fan, obviously, and I know Doc called uh, Ranger Radio, actually, for quite a while before he, um, before he went to the Devils. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's made an impact on both of our lives, and uh, we're really looking forward, to, uh, we're looking forward to this list. So stay tuned to the next episode, Top 5 Doc Emmerich Moments. I'm Jimmy Finizzi. This is the Bottom Line Podcast. See you in the next episode. Peace out.